Good morning and hello and afternoon, depending on your time zone and where you are. It is wonderful to see you all again. Thank you for joining us on this journey with the National Institute for Directing and Ensemble Creation in our virtual weekend. We are rolling and we are loving it. My name is Andrea Asaf. I'm the Artistic Director of Art to Action, uh, zooming in from Tampa, Florida on the land of the Seminole people. Uh, we invite you to say hello to each other in the chat and also let us know where you are zooming in from and whose land you are on, um, if you are following along on uh, HowlRound or wherever. Uh, I would like to invite Suzanne uh, Cross from Pangea World Theater to do land acknowledgements together. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Andrea. I'm so excited to be here and on screen with everyone. Um, Pangea World Theater and Art to Action acknowledge that we are on the sacred tra um, traditional lands of the first people of Turtle Island. For Pangea, it is an honor to live, work, and create art and community alongside Dakota and Ojibwe and the first people in the Twin Cities and Minnesota. Art to Action in Tampa, Florida is on the land of the Seminole people. We pay respect to Indigenous peoples past present and future. As we grow in our work of decolonization, we build relationships at the speed of trust and endeavor to move from acknowledgement to action. And we invite you to acknowledge the first peoples of the lands where you are currently. Please name them in the chat and to learn more, you can go to nativeland.ca. Uh, I think the link is in the chat as well. Um, so it is my great honor and pleasure to welcome today Sharon Bridgeforth for our masterclass. And Sharon's bio is on the screen and will be in the chat, but I just want to say personally that Sharon has been with us on this journey with the National Institute for Directing and Ensemble Creation for a very long time, uh, being a voice of reflection in our first gathering in 2012 who, and wrote a beautiful article, which I hope you all will check out. Um, reflecting on that first experience and has been a master artist and mentor at the Institute uh, as recently as 2019 and most recently appeared in the Black Directors uh, Roundtable, which HowlRound streamed. If you have not seen that, you should check it out as well. Um, and it is just always an honor and a pleasure to be in the presence of Sharon Bridgeforth, uh, to experience the work and the creative process that she has to offer and um, the wisdom and joy of her creative process as well. Uh, so without further ado, please welcome Sharon Bridgeforth for this special masterclass. Hello, Sharon, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. I'm so grateful to be here. It is such an honor and a privilege. Um, and I wanna start by just really thanking you all for making this happen. Uh, Pangea and Art to Action and, you know, the labor, the love in action, um, all the years of creating and holding space for us and inviting us back and building and world changing um, that this is that you all have done and continue to do. Uh, I just feel extremely humbled and grateful. And I invite um, everyone to just drop into the chat your gratitudes. Um, for me, I know this is a place where I know I'm loved. I know I'm seen. I'm welcomed. I, you know, we can have the hard and sometimes messy conversations and things and still rise um, closer and uh, more fully ourselves and, and encouraged. Uh, and for me, that is really precious. And uh, in this, I feel I'm able to honor my ancestors and the people that have sacrificed and shaped these moments that I'm in most fully and then carry that out. So I invite you to drop into the chat some of your gratitudes um, as we move forward. What we are going to do during our time together is um, do a little bit of writing. So uh, I encourage you to get something to write with, whether it's your computer, uh, paper and pen, whatever. Um, I'll start by giving context. Uh, I will offer prompts throughout our time together. At some point, I'll ask the people that are here live with us in Zoom 
to uh, go into breakout sessions and make work together. And while that's happening for the folks on HowlRound, there'll be a video playing and then I will pop in there and, and chat. And then we'll all come back together and the folks that uh, made work together will be invited to share. So that's just a, a little bit. Um, so I'm on Kids Land. I'm in LA, the place that I grew up in um, and returned to about three years ago. Uh, so I'm home, uh, very grateful. And thinking about this institute and all of you here, uh, Diane Rodriguez and Lori Carlos come to mind. So I just wanna lift them up. I'm so grateful I got to spend uh, just earth time and spirit time and work time and play time with them both. Uh, and so I just wanna say their names. And so I invite you to Take a moment and both in the chat and in your notebooks or whatever you're writing with to just name some of the people now ancestors that you're grateful for in this moment. So write some of those names down. You won't have a lot of time, but, but write some of those names down. It's beautiful to see the names rolling through the chat. And we know that they're here with us always. Um, and that we can continue to commune and, and be with them and learn from them and make them laugh. <laughs> um, take a moment, if you would, and just, and, and during our time together, and write, the prompts are gonna be written in the chat but also I invite you to write the prompts down because you. the truth is, is we could spend a half year doing this, <laughs> but we've got two hours. So you won't have as much time as I'd actually like to give you to respond to prompts. So I invite you to take the prompts with you. Uh, and if you need to see the prompt, like if it escaped you and I don't repeat it, just look, scroll and you'll see that they will be written there. Um, but use them for journaling, use them for, you know, walking meditations, whatever works for you. Um, take a moment and just breathe into whoever feels most with you right now. Thinking of ancestors, knowing that there are no veils, that the living, the dead, the unborn coexist, that the past, the present, the future is now. Who of light and progress is most with you in this moment? And what is one thing that they said to you or are saying to you that resonates deeply? So for me, I'm gonna say two people actually as example, uh, Lori Carlos, and she used to always say, everything's already in the room. And I'll say my dad, who's from New Orleans, Algiers. And we would say, dad, do you want to move back to New Orleans? And he'd say, in the morning. <laughs> so anyway, pick one person. You can do more of this on your own time. But pick one person and, one, and write down one thing that is really with you that they have told you, that they have shared with you. And then take a moment and write the story of that. What is the story of that? And you're not going to have a lot of time, but you know, get it started.
So take about another minute. All right, bring that to a close. And we'll keep building. Um, but I want to take a moment and give a little context uh, for how I work, how I've been shaped, and what I'm offering. Um, the book <laughs> about the theatrical jazz aesthetic which is the lineage that I'm a part of artistically, is this gorgeous book called Theatrical Jazz, Performance Ashe and the Power of the Present Moment. And we'll drop a link in for the, the book. Um, the hard copies are no longer available um, at the moment, but you can, it, it is available as an ebook. It is by Omi Oshun, Joni L. Jones, and it is just a gorgeous, really ethnographic work where she gives history, context, rooting, um, her own journey and specific stories um, um, and works with artists uh, that work in this aesthetic. The, the, the naming theatrical jazz actually was coined by Aisha Rahman in the 70s um, and you know you know, we black, so as soon as you name something, we like, what, we doing this now. <laughs> so just like the musicians, it's not meant to be a tight box, but what it is meant to do is help us name our family, our lineage, and the tools that we're working with, um, which Omi roots all the way down into uh, Yoruba spiritual cosmologies and, and practices. I'm going to read just an uh, short bits, and this is for context, um, of an essay that Omi did that was published um, back in 2005 in the Theater Journal. So this was before the book came out. Um, and there's also, Omi has a uh, website um, that has some audio and video of her talking about the book. And the, that, that um, link will also be in the chat. Anyway, Omi says, this work began to form in the early 70s alongside the Black Arts Movement in the Sounds in Motion dance studio under the tutelage of Diane McIntyre. Sounds in Motion became the artistic workshop for a host of legendary performance artists, including Lori Carlos, Indazaki Shange, Jawale Willa Joe Zolar, Marlies Shirobi, musicians Cecil Taylor, Craig Harris, Seku Sundiata, and Olu Dar, with whom McIntyre continues to create work. This simultaneous mu movement-fused music, sound, dance, movement, and spoken word was primarily initiated and perpetuated by women. It relied on breath as a spiritual fire of the work and set no limits on Blackness. A theatrical jazz aesthetic borrows many elements from the musical world of jazz, improvisation, process over product, ensemble synthesis, solo virtuosity, and it disrupts the traditional conventions of Western theater, including a single narrative with a through line and causal relationships that rely on psychological co coherence, individual characters performed sing singingly by performers, and identifiable places and spaces. 
A jazz aesthetic uses gestural language as counterpoint to verbal text. This gestural language is a blend of modern dance, contemporary dance, popular idioms, and everyday physical references like washing dishes, getting dressed, or chasing a ball. Some of the movement reflects West African aesthetics, angularity, movements that pull to the earth, unpredictable punctuation. But the modern dance foundation from McIntyre remains apparent. There is a fluidity of time and space in a jazz aesthetic, now and then, and will be coexist. There and here, and never was, is. Ancestors and deities and nature and humans float, sing, spin, and make worlds together, aware or unaware of each other's presence. Okay, Dr. Jones. Y'all know Dr. Jones, my wife, right? <laughs> anyway, but we've worked together for many, many years before we got together. And so very proud for, of her and grateful for her work. Um, what is your aesthetic? Take a moment, if you would, and just write, name your aesthetic. And you know, this is not about boxing. This is not, this is about expansion. So expansively, just name your aesthetic and make sure you note a little bit about what it is rooted in, what, sh what shapes and informs it. Again, you won't have a long time, so uh, make sure you write the question down. For those just entering or just joining, you can scroll through and find the prompts that we are currently writing through and that we have written about. Bring that to a close. As Omi mentioned in her essay um, and talks a lot about in her book, um, this form, this aesthetic is basically very much driven by ancestral connection. For myself, um, it is all um, my wholehearted desire to live a spiritual life, to heal, to be a healer, and to um, move the lineage forward is the work. Um, how I tell stories, how I am in collaboration is informed basically not only by the people that mentored me and shaped me, 
like Lori Carlos and Robbie McCauley and so many others. Um, but it's also um, by, shaped by my trying to tell stories as good as my family. So for me, growing up, being someone that just was mesmerized um, by the elders in my family. I was the youngest one for a long time. I remember that they were always dancing. There was food always, folks laughing, singing, crying, like all these things happening at the same time. Uh, a lot of good timing and a lot of grief all at the same time. A lot of repetition, same stories being told over and over and over. And what I now know is that was all such a gift. That was how, what I had to lean into, not only as I make work, but as I grow uh, and move forward in the lineage and in my own soul. What are the elements of storytelling that are part of your inheritance? What are some of, you won't have time to tend to all of them, but what are some of the elements of storytelling that are part of your inheritance that you use in your work right now? You'll just have a couple of minutes. And again, if you didn't quite catch the question, or if you're just joining up, look in the chat, scroll through, and you can catch it there. Bring that to a close. And just kind of look through your responses thus far and frame things, circle, box, underline, frame things that jump out at you. So no right or wrong just uh, following your authentic curiosity and feeling. Go through and just frame some things.
So um, you can return to framing a little later, um, but I wanna uh, move towards uh, sharing a little video clip. Um, but before we do that, um, Lori is really present with me for many reasons, she always is, but um, she was the one that invited me to join her in 2012 at that first Directors Institute. I, I didn't know what it was gonna be. I just said yes and showed up like I always did when she invited me or pushed me on to places, uh, sent me places and I'm so grateful I did. And I see a lot of you here that I love so much. Uh, and so again, it's so wonderful to be here with you. And for those of you that are new, welcome. Um, from the essay uh, that Omi wrote, she named some of the architects of the theatrical jazz aesthetic. I wanna put some more names in there. Um, Daniel Alexander Jones, Grisha Coleman, Helga Davis, uh, Florinda Bryant, Virginia Grice, Sonia Perryman, Robbie McCulley, Jessica Hagedorn. Uh, it's a long, long list, y'all. But uh, I just wanted to drop some more names in. Uh, Zell Miller III, Jola Branner. Oh God, it's a long list. Um, if I say names that you've never heard, please look them up. If I've said names of folks that you know and love, reach out to them. I think we all really need to be in as much touch as we can through these interwebs and phone lines <laughs> these days as possible. Uh, let's check on each other. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, and while I'm thinking of it, I also just wanna acknowledge there are so many people working behind the scenes to hold this space for us. So thank you to everybody that's holding all the spaces um, that is the space and are the spaces that we are in here together right now. So thank you. Um, but let's play the first video clip in just a second. Um, this was the first time I worked with Lori Carlos. Um, it was a piece I wrote called Blood Pudding. It was um, information about it, including who the performers are and all of that stuff is in the, will be in the chat. But basically it premiered at Frontier at Hyde Park Theater in Austin, Texas. Uh, Vicki Boone was at the time the artistic director of Frontier. And you'll see Jola Branner, Renita Martin, Stacey Robinson, Zell Miller III, uh, Florinda Bryant uh, performing. And it was the first time I got to work with Lori and I literally just sat at her feet. Um, so she directed this piece. Up until that point, I, and, 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 and this is still my way, like, honestly, I don't actually identify as a performer or a director. I identify as a writer who works in performance. But the truth is, is, you know, I collaborate to bring work to stage and I'm using all those tools that, um, are part of the jazz aesthetic, theatrical jazz aesthetic that Omi talks about in her work and all the ways that stories are told and embellished um, that I grew up with. And just my own curiosities um, as a writer um, who has been shaped by the world, by spirit uh, and by people who've loved me. Um, up until working with Lori, I was just, I, didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> and there's so many ways that I still don't, you know, if we're lucky, we keep learning and growing. But this was pivotal because I got to sit at the feet of a master artist who looked at me and loved me and took me in. And when I later looked back on this script, the script, to tell you the honest truth, is not that well written, but they performed the fuck out this script. Lori directed the hell out this thing. And by being with her, I was able to gather more tools and learn more about myself as a writer and also what, how to imagine more fully my work on the stage and how to work with, with others. So, okay, anyway, let's play the clip, it's short.
policeman who lined his very dark. In the book of color they had, quadroom equal one fourth black, rest white. Laurie and that cast. Um, so in blood pudding, I was um, trying to write my way into understanding more about my birth family on my father's side, which I didn't um, start living with until I was a teenager, but felt always haunted by them, literally. <laughs> and for real when I first went to New Orleans, but that's another story. But anyway, uh, so I did a lot of research, a lot of um, digging up of blood memories, um, a lot of um, just kind of writing my way through, but really looking at the history of uh, people of African descent in, in New Orleans. And so that was the bones of the piece. And I had written, a. I don't do stage directions. Uh, even then I didn't do stage directions, but what I had written, I had written a song and it said in parentheses above it, song, ring shout. And then there was text that followed. And what Lori did was she took the ring shout and she turned it out and created the movement with those gestures and the breath. And I always felt like Lori her signature as a director, um, one of them at least, is that she would tell the story that the text was telling with a lot of little photographs that moved. And um, so anyway, just it, one of the things that was so impactful, many things were impactful as you can imagine about that experience for me, but one of the things that it did that was really important. What it was, it freed me as a writer from trying to tend to directions. So for me, I allowed myself to um, be even more curious than I had been before about what my collaborators, um, performers, audiences, um, um, you know, uh, whoever the. Uh, visual artists, like more curious about what they would bring to the work than about me telling them what to do inside of it. And so then my job as a writer was then to write in a way that held space that was specific. And so the writing was the architecture um, and I do not like my words being changed. So I was you know, being very intentional in, in the writing and the for me, the use of language as music, but then somehow like which is just so much fun for me um uh, helping the page to invite and hold space for other people's vision to be inside of it and so I guess a prompt I have for you huh there's Florinda uh, a prompt that I have for you 
is what is it that you have learned from one of your mentors that you are still exploring and expanding? What is it that you've learned from one of your mentors that you are still exploring and expanding? Hey, Flo, we just showed blood pudding. <laughs> okay, give you a moment. So again, if you didn't quite catch the question, uh, you can scroll and, and find it. So bring that to a close and I'm gonna share another video in just a second. Um, this video is a documentary, so we're only gonna see a little piece of it, but the link will be in the chat. Um, but it, in it, I'm talking about um, a piece called River Sea um, that premiered uh, at Lynx Hall in Chicago in 2014 and talking about kind of like the architecture of the piece. Um, and so in this, I really found that I wanted the audience to be more engaged, accountable, responsive and activated inside of the piece than in previous pieces. So um, the audience has always, I call them witness participants, been really important to, the, to helping to create the experience. But with this one, I really wanted to activate the audience um, more. And I wanted to, I found that I had to put my body in it and um, I created some physical signals to help um, offer improvisational responses from the performers and from the audience that were from the text and from the world of the piece, but also improvised based on my invitations. Um, I had been deeply inspired by Lawrence Butch Morris, um, whose work I found out about in the 2000s because I got to work with Helga Davis who worked with Butch and just his conduction. And so you, if you don't know his work, please look him up, Lawrence Butch Morris. He's now an ancestor, um, but he created as a jazz musician, something called conduction where basically he'd invite, one of the things that he did was he'd invite musicians from all over lots of different instruments, uh, musical backgrounds and experiences, and they would have to learn his signals. So they weren't getting a sheet of music. What they were getting was his signals. And, and then they would create music improvisationally live. And Helga directed a piece of mine in I think 2004, uh, Love Conjure Blues uh, at the University of Texas in Austin in the uh, 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 John L. Warfield Center for African and African American Studies. And Helga's direction was very similar to that. And so 
I, it just took me years to get the courage to actually do it. But I had been moving towards this thing of putting my own body in it and composing uh, live. So anyway, let's play uh, just a couple of minutes from this documentary. I'm Sharon Bridgeforth, the writer and composer of River City. <laughs> River Sea is a theatrical jazz performance installation. And what that means for me is that the text serves as the structure that uh, improvisation happens from. So the text is, um, or the script, is handled by Sanja Parks, who plays C, S-E-E. -E. And the text is a series of blues stories. And in these stories, C tells us about her family, her ancestors, um, her dreams um, and her community. My soul moves in the night. I see my suit come in. Everybody there. I have developed a series of gestures that are requests. <laughs> This means change, sonically, uh, follow me, uh, walk up and down the center of the crossroads. Uh, for the Egu or the dancers, this means warrior, dance, uh, do what you feel, see needs, um, process, go get her. Um, <laughs> when the audience comes in, I ask them uh, who feels like gossiping, and I give them bits of text that are gossipy. I say, who feels like praying or sending light, and I give them bits of text that have that kind of energy. And I'll ask, who feels like translating, and I give them bits of text. We're going to invite you to a little extra. <laughs> 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 I do this, I'm asking you. Suggestion. Uh, so just try that right now. You don't have to do what I'm doing. Thank you. So again, you can see the full thing online. Um, when we go into the breakout sessions uh, where the folks that are with us live on Zoom are going to be creating work, those of you on HowlRound will see a clip from the performance. So we'll continue that conversation in that way. Uh, a prompt that I have for you is what is the thing that you are most afraid to do that is a thing you need to do in order to realize your work more fully? What is a thing that you are most afraid to do that you need to do in order to realize your work more fully? So write that prompt down and then you'll just have you know, a couple of minutes to respond.
I'm going to offer one more prompt and then we're going to go into the breakout sessions. And then again, the folks in HowlRound, uh, there'll be a video and conversation happening. Um, this final prompt, at least for now, is what is the story that you need to tell right now that could offer the most healing for you? What is the story that you need to tell right now that could offer the most healing for you? So take just a couple of minutes. So bring that to a close. Um, thinking about theatrical jazz, thinking about Lori and the piece that she directed of mine that, that I shared from Blood Pudding. What I learned from Lori is that she was always listening for what hadn't been said yet. And sometimes she would hear it through your gestures, your everyday, like if this is my gesture, I'm just talking to you, that gesture, if I was a performer, that would end up in the thing. And somewhere underneath that gesture, something would shift in me that needed to come forward. Uh, I think also in theatrical jazz, we have, we're, we're working with the idea of ensemble, working as an ensemble or working as a collective and virtuosity, always virtuosity, but solo performance. So some solo, so sometimes I'm the one that's the lead voice. And then sometimes I, need to step back into the 
uh, collective. And so we're shining together and we're holding space for each other and we're listening for what hasn't happened yet, which means that sometimes dissonance gets created. And sometimes out of the dissonance, the unexplainable phenomena happen. So what are the risks? I, I said I, that was the last prompt. This is the last one for right now. What are the risks that you take in your work as a director? What are the risks? What are the ways that you risk in your work? So let's bring that to a close. And then I want to check in with our team. I think the breakout rooms are not working. Is that true? That's the word on the street, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> OK, look. We're rolling, we're rolling with it, OK? Yeah, we're going to roll with it. We know how to do that. We go step and shift. So for the people that are here with us on Zoom that want to be in conversation uh, live, um, if you would keep yourselves muted, but show your, uh, you know, like unstop your video and we'll have a conversation and we'll see what happens. And I want to, oh, gallery, I want to do, yeah, there we go. Hey! Oh, snap. Oh my God. Okay, I, I'm i just so happy to see you all. This was like a, a Christmas gift. I, it was on, all I could see was my face and then I did gallery and there you were and I'm so happy. You all are feeling my heart. Yes. I invite you first to just look at each other with your fine selves. Just take each other in, all the memories we have, all the new memories we make in, all the love that's here. Oh, all the power, blessed be, good God almighty. Oh, Lord. Thank you. So I just wanna, open, I think we can still make some work together. But before we do that, I just want to open and see if anyone wants to share anything either that they responded to in the prompts or anything that has come up about your work, how you make work, who's influenced you, anything you feel moved to, to say, I invite you. And don't feel free to not raise your hand like we can just pop in. You know, and if two people end up talking at the same time, we'll just figure out how to have one person talk. <laughs> well, listen. Oh, Linda, can't hear you. I think you're talking, but for some reason I can't hear you.
Oh, now it's muted. I think we need to ask our team to unmute um, participants and allow oh, participants okay. to speak. Okay. There we go. Okay, now try it, Linda. Oh, oh still not hearing it. Still well, not hearing she's it. muted now. Yeah, we're working it out. Um, see if we can uh, get, just take a little time. Thanks everyone for your patience and for rolling with it. Okay, Let's try well, again. Oh, okay. Linda, you want to try again? Uh, oh, no. Okay. Ooh, okay. Well, while they're, while the team's working on that, um, I'd like to ask you all to go through some of your responses and find a thread that you want to follow. Like if you were to make a little mini story right now, what would that be just based on whatever writing, or maybe you responded to drawing or, you know, noting music, but with your responses, find the thread that you want to follow and tend to it for, for a moment. You'll just have a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes, sorry. Sharon, can you repeat the prompt, please? Oh, sure. Does that mean that the sound is working? Because I heard you. Mine um, might be on. <laughs> OK. Check one, check two, check one, check two. Can you hear me? Oh, go, Flo. I can yeah, hear you. I can hear you. All right. Thanks, team. OK. All right. So the prompt was um, look through your responses to the prompts that I offered earlier and find a story or a nugget that you want to follow. So basically the invitation is to find something in there and make a little short bit out of it. And you're not going to, you don't have that much time. So, you know, it's not full story. It's just probably going to be a couple of sentences. Okay, bring that to a close for now. Oh snap, they got the breakout rooms ready. Okay, that's actually perfect. So take that in to the breakout rooms. <laughs> we know how to roll, don't we, show this. Okay. Um, so in the breakout rooms, I invite you 
um, and there'll be roughly five people per room. You're only gonna have 15 minutes, um, but I invite you to share what you just crafted and then together create something. So each creation should have at least one word from everybody. Maybe there's a way that you have all the lines from everyone, but at least one word from everybody. It should have some gestures and it should have something sung. If you have the capacity for uh, it to be multilingual, let that rise in there as well. When we return, I'm going to ask each group to share what they created. So don't let it be like, keep it at two minutes, just, you know, being mindful of time. Again, you know, if we were meeting live in person, we'd have days, but uh, we got two minutes here and, and that's good. Um, so again, in the breakout rooms, everyone share the, the piece that they, that you just tended together create something, make sure the thing has, that you create has at least one word from everybody, but you could decide that everybody's words all get heard. This is totally up to the group. Should have gestural language or some gestures in it, something sung. And if you have the, this available in your group, multilingual. You'll have 15 minutes. When we come back, we'll ask each group to share no more than two minutes of what, of what you created, and then we'll talk. Any questions? And then uh, folks in HowlRound, you all will see a video and I'll pop in and chat with you um, before we all come back. Suzanne also wrote our group instructions in the chat if you need it. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. Breakout rooms, hi. <laughs> So I think in just a moment, you'll be getting an invitation to join a breakout room. If you see that pop up, uh, you can just accept to join it. Uh, yes, click the message to join blue button as, it, as you get the invitation. And we'll see you on the other side in just a few minutes. Or, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll keep hanging out. <laughs> we are rolling, going with the flow today. Yes, it has been so inspiring already, Sharon. These, um, these prompts are just golden uh, gifts. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I, so is anyone seeing the invitation to join a breakout? Can I see some head shakes or nods? I've seen a lot of no's. Uh, the invitations are not popping up. I'm saying that out loud for our tech team. Ooh, there's a little wiggle no in the background. I Hi. see you, Oba. Hey. Hey. All right. If breakouts do not pop up, we can just continue the conversation and stay together. Absolutely. You can just have Oba uh, dance for us. That's right. That's <laughs> right. That's always good. Go ahead, Oba, do your dance. <laughs> I think the Hell Room folks aren't getting the, the, the joy of all the dancing. 
all the dancing. Maybe we are in gallery view. This yeah. is clearly a dance break moment. That is what is what has organically happened. So I say we all just take the dance break moment. Yes. Yes. Woo, shake it out. <laughs> oh yeah, that's my song. Who's got music? Well, what should we do? Tanya, do you have a message for us? Uh, this is a great moment to introduce and thank Tanya Neumeyer, who is working tech in the background all this time. Hey, Tanya, what you say? Hi, so I just went over to a breakout room uh, and I chatted oh. with Lila. And uh, I think the thing is that uh, because we had to initialize them a little late in the game, our apologies. Uh, we, my guess, best guess, Thea, you can tune in on this, is that it's only working for people who joined late uh, the meeting. Because oh. I, <laughs> I can show you the screenshot that it works on my end, but I think that may be correlated to the fact that I left. So we just have to make a decision of, do we really want to do the breakout rooms? Then we all just go and come back uh, to this same Zoom room. Uh, I think we can stay here and, and flow. Okay, thank you thank so much. Thank you, appreciate it. And your work. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, and thank you for the song and the movement. Um, so, uh, first of all, I want to hear, Linda, what you were going to say earlier. Oh, we still can't hear you. Linda, you, it might be your mic. Let's, uh, let's go to someone else and then see if, uh, if that works and give Linda. Okay, a sure. Okay. All right. Um, then let's play with the pieces um, that you created and then we'll, uh, we'll do a little bit of that and then we'll talk. So anyone that wants to I invite you to share the piece that you just shaped. So anyone that wants to just, just do it. Yes. I'll share mine. Thank you. So Thank good you. to see you, darling. Yay. Yay. Thank you. So I had two deities, Oluremi and Daddy who created two mountains that they transformed into bodies that knew everything. They were wise bodies. They knew everything in the world there is to know. When they gave birth to them, the two bodies bowed down and said to mommy and daddy, thank you for bringing us into the world. Now teach us everything you know. Mm -hmm. So they said, oh no, you're supposed to know everything. They said, no, you brought us here. We did not ask to be here. So now you have to teach us everything you know. Mm, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's All it. right, so <laughs> is it okay with you if we play with you with sure. your piece? Okay, great. All right, so in a moment, I'm gonna ask you to read it again. Okay. And this time, everyone, as you feel moves to offer gestures. So we're going to add a layer of gesture. Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear it again, if you don't mind. Okay, so Olu, Remy, and Daddy created two mountains. Then they decided to transform the mountains into bodies that would know everything in the world. So they created the two wisest people in the world. When they gave birth to them, the two children bowed down to their parents and said, mommy and daddy, thank you for birthing us and bringing us into the world. Now teach us everything you know. Yay, thank you. All right, thank you everyone. Okay, we're gonna continue to play um, and continue to layer. 
someone else, please, uh, um, Idris, you stay on if you don't mind. Uh, okay. And someone else, please um, share what you crafted. Okay, I, I, I'll share. Okay, uh, thank you. Everyone, we're together here at TNS. So, uh, so this is what I crafted. Uh, okay. Returning to my roots, I seek the drive and passion to ignite the engine on the road to healing. Mm. Ooh, say that again. Yeah. Yes. Returning to my roots, I seek the drive and passion to ignite the engine on the road to healing. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so now I'm gonna ask you two to play together. So Ova, if you would just repeat yours, like just do it in repetition. You all really listen to each other. You'll have to figure out who is the lead voice or are you all in um, uh, ensemble voice together? When the rest of us feel moved to offer gestural language in support. So it's not that you're doing with your gestures literally what they're talking about, but it's almost as if you're in another layer of the world that they are in. So offer gestural language in support of what they are sharing. Okay, so you two go whenever you're ready. Returning to my roots. 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 And Idris, you come in with yours. Mommy and daddy created a mountain. Returning to my roots. Mommy and daddy created a mountain. Okay, let's stop. Okay, so this time let's do it again and do the text as you have it written. Okay. And then Ova, I think yours, because it's shorter, you'll need to repeat it. And, and you all may want to both repeat your text just to kind of, you know, find your legs together. You know, are we giving space for each language or? You, I think you all in listening, make okay. those decisions in spirit. Right. Okay. And then we'll offer, I wanna add another thing, we'll offer gestures as we're moved to. And again, it's, it's like we're part of a world that's holding the world that they are speaking to us through and from. That's where the gestures are coming from. If anyone feels moved to add um, a multilingual lingual element uh, and, and spirit and offering, do that, please. And there can be as many languages as are available to us using some of the words that they offer. Okay, let's try it. Mommy and daddy created a mountain. Returning to my roots. They turned that mountain into a body. I seek the drive and passion. The wisest bodies in the world. Yo regreso a la montaña. To ignite the engine. They created two of them. De vuelta a mis raíces. Mm. Two wisest people in the world. Yo regreso a la montaña. On the road to healing. De vuelta a mis raíces. When those bodies were born, Re mommy and when those bodies were born, they bowed down. Returning to my roots. De vuelta a mis raíces. They said, thank you, mommy and daddy. Now teach me everything you know. 
El regreso a la montaña. The drive and passion to ignite the engine on the road to healing. De vuelta mis raíces. Wasn't that beautiful? That was so beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's keep playing. We're going to add one more element and we're going to try something a tiny bit different. Okay, so the element I'd like to invite us to add is someone who, uh, I'd like to invite someone to sing what, what you wrote. So one of you, so not, not Idris or Ova, we're having a third person, a third voice in to sing what you wrote. And it doesn't have to be the whole thing. It could just be some words. We'll continue the gestural support. We'll continue the spiritual choir of, of languages. This time, Ova and Idris talk at the same time. So this time you're saying different things, but you're in the same world and spirit talking at the same time. So part of what you have to then negotiate is um, how do you hear each other, but then also, you know, uh, volume and stuff like that. But you have to feel into that and just um, repeat your, your language as necessary. And then to our, our, our spiritual chorus, um, offering uh, multi-language and spirit to our world here. You all are also part of the same world. And so you're in support of these two lead speakers, but we do still need to hear you. And you don't have to wait until there's a pause, but if you want to, you can, but feel free to, 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 to hold them um, as they speak. And then the person that is going to, let's do this before we bring in the person that's gonna sing. So let's try this one time. And then the next time we'll bring in someone that's gonna sing. Okay, let's go. Wait, I'm sorry, what are we oh. doing right now? So right now, you two are in the world together, same oh, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And we'll still have the gestural language. We'll still have the uh, multiple languages. Um, OK. OK. Thank you. Thank can you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's a miracle. Yay! <laughs> Linda. OK. Thank you so much. <laughs> That was perfect. Oh, Jesus. Okay, whenever you're ready. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy. To my roots. Created a mountain. Seek the drive and passion. They transform those mountains. Okay, I'm going to stop you. Talk at the same time. Okay. Okay, Talk go. With heart. I know, right? Yeah. I, I got you pinned, Idris, on, on my screen, just so if you want to connect. If you go on your screen and there's uh, that three dot, dot, dots, there's one yeah. that's video, you can pin me and I'm pinning you right now, so. How do I pin? Gotta be. Um, if you look on your your video, uh, click it and there should be three dot, dot, dots on the top right. Oh yeah. And then it says pin video. So go to my video, pin me. And then I'll, I'll show up on, on, on the screen with you. OK. Does that make sense? Let me try to do that. I don't think I have that. I'm on my phone. Oh, OK. Yeah. That's fine then. Not, I'm here with you. I'm, I got you. <clears throat> I got you if you got me. All right, here we go. Okay. Mommy and daddy. My roots. Created two mountains. Drive and passion. Transform those mountains. Into regreso a la montaña. Two bodies. Two wise bodies. De vuelta mis raíces. Drive and everything. To ignite the engine on the road to healing. The two wisest bodies in the world. Regreso a la montaña. When those I children were born, passion. 
De vuelta, mis raíces. Road to heal. They said, Mommy and Daddy. Yo regreso a la montaña. Everything you know. Five in passion. De vuelta, mis raíces. All right. Thank you. Okay, let's do it one more time with the actually we're going to do it two more times because we're going to add a, a final layer. But uh, this time let's invite the the singer in whoever is going to sing and whoever is singing you are the lead voice so you be louder than everyone else. So can I, yes. Can I, um, just say something. Hi, Sharon. Hi, good to see you. Um, there's a setting. Yes. Okay. I, I put it into the chat. There's a setting in Zoom that um, makes um, that uh, that disallows for voices to speak over each other. Ah. And that oh. setting can be turned off. Oh. Okay. It's, okay. Yeah. So we put it on the original on. sound, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, I think the setting can be turned off so that you can speak over or speak together. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we couldn't hear the text have to uh, together. Give our uh, tech team a second to work on that, uh, but uh, we're not 100% sure. Let's just keep rolling and, um, and see how it evolves. Okay. All right. Okay. Hey. So, I changed my sound. Yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, great. Okay. Awesome. Does that work? Turn on. Turn 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 on audio or, or turn on. So just go ahead and click on that. Turn on. Do we turn on the original sound or turn the device sound? I, it was already on. I think it's turn on original sound. I think. Okay. Let's, let's try that. Yeah. yeah. And who's singing? <laughs> Johanna, I, I think Johanna is singing. Oh, wonderful! Oh. oh hi. Oh, good. Okay. Let's make sure we can hear you. Can we hear you? Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Okay, great. Okay. Let's see what happens. Yeah. All right. All right. So breathing in, being present, being playful and curious, allowing what wants to happen to instruct us, knowing that if we had more time, we'd work all this shit out. <laughs> but for right now, we go play and discover. <laughs> All right, thank you, let's go. Yo siempre he dicho que la vida de mis hijos vale más que el mío. The engine on the road to healing. Regreso a mis raíces. It's your body. Returning to my roots. To of the wildness of the mountain. To regress from its raíces. Yo canta. siempre he dicho que la vida de mis hijos vale más my que el mío. Regress from its raíces. They bow down. Regress from the mountain. On the road to healing. Thank you, mommy. Yo siempre he dicho que la vida de mis hijos Regreso a mis raíces. vale más que el mío. Regreso a la montaña. The engine on the road to healing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. So kind of in, in closing, uh, uh, I'd like to invite all of you to read or sing or offer gestures and just play with timing in a way that feels good and right for you. But uh, if you'd like, let's hear all of your voices and it can, all, it can be a cacophony. Um, so there might be dissonance, maybe it'll be really bright and beautiful. Maybe it'll be creaky, but let's see what happens. So I invite everyone as an ensemble to offer and be sure to uh, 
add in gestures. You can sing, it can be multilingual. It, you know, you can repeat uh, your text, but let's hear everyone that wants to at least participate. And go. Next up. She came at night. Regresó a mis raíces. Regresó a la montaña. 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 Regreso a montaña. The number of males in the family. Now with these words and let us number of your nas in the family. The number of the females in the family. Some really sorry ass boys. Release words and let their just be gestures. Sorry, yes. Diasporic history. Yes, y'all. Yes, family. <laughs> Beautiful. So thank you each for participating, for offering, for being present, for going on the journey, for being so generous and, and courageous and kind. Um, so yeah, let's open it. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll follow each other, whatever you want to offer, talk about, share. Um, let's just be in conversation for this last bit of time. And if there are questions from the HowlRound um, stream, we can also uh, have those join us. Darren? Yes. Can you, you can hear me now. I can good. hear you now. Okay. Yes, I can. Okay. So good to see you. Hey, yo. <laughs> I do, I do want to say that, um, you know, the, the deepening of the questions, the prompts was really um, had impact, you know, it, it, uh, it, it, went from oh yes i can answer this to oh um that calls for a deeper examination <laughs> and the progression was really good and i just wanted to thank you for that you know thank uh, you you're an excellent uh facilitator of this workshop so thank you thank you so much that means a lot coming from you because you are super badass <laughs> no so you I'm are the badass i'm just You're trying to badass. hang in here <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out my sound linda says <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much okay who else wants to share offer oh novako hi I miss you so much. No. Oh, so you, good to you see know, you. You know, actually, the way you led this was like jazz. Oh. You know, it just felt like jazz itself. So oh. even though, you know, you're going with the melody and then all of a sudden you're going, okay, you know, we have some yeah. offsprings from that melody and then it, it confused me and then uh, and then I tried to find my way back to the melody, you know what I mean? Yeah. So really a, a fascinating um, um, process and one that I could relate to because I love jazz and yeah. it made me ask a lot of questions about, you know, my these multi-cultures, blurry, you know, we live in a blurry, you know, we live in this mixed up world and, um, to say that we only are one thing is crazy because we're not. Yeah. And and that can be very confusing at times. How do you bring those different voices and those different aesthetics yeah. into one place and have them work for you? Um, is a question that I have all the time. And and how do we express these multi-worlds that we live in in a way that uh, really helps people synthesize their own lives? 
thank you so much. And you're masterful at that in many ways. And one of them is in how you um, create space and offer the Balm Festival. Would you talk a little bit about that? Well, that was another stumble. Uh, when I worked with Getzal uh, and he took me to a Fandango class, which is a Fandango is when people make music around a platform called a darima and these small guitars called uh, haranas, uh, players. It's a very uh, participatory uh, situation where people who are not necessarily professional musicians learn how to play these instruments, learn these three or four chords, and, and, and they start singing these songs and making verses up as they're going. And uh, then I saw, because I've written some obon songs, which we dance around the platform and the, the musicians stand in the middle of, of, of on this platform. So I, I said to Getzal, I wonder what would happen if we bring these two things together. And, and when we went to Reverend Kodani, uh, who uh, of the temple that I'm part of, he said, well, it shouldn't be a fusion. Mm -hmm. It should be a conversation. Yes. So each of us had to stick to oh. our, our own aesthetic and yet figure out a way to create a conversation. Yeah. So that's what we did with this music. And, and then what happened, it, and it had Spanish and Japanese and English in it. And what happened is, and we created a circle dance. And what happened is the Japanese community picked this up in their festivals and it's being done all over <laughs> Southern California and beyond uh, in these different temples every year. And, and they feel perfectly comfortable hearing Japanese and Spanish and English in the same song be because that's how they live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it makes people feel comfortable. Well, this is the way we live anyway. How come mm -hmm. we can't dance in a circle and remember ancestors, which, which Obon is about remembering ancestors. Why can't we remember all of our ancestors in the same circle? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it's been now it's a festival that's been going for eight years. And now we have African, uh, uh, West African dance and Sufi Muslims. And, and so we, we've learned how to take in all of these different elements and uh, put them in the same circle. Mm -hmm. so it's been very enriching and fun and challenging too. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing. I'm so grateful I got to go to a, the festival that happened last year. And it's so awesome. And I think, I feel like there's a thing that we're trying to do in the Jazz Aesthetic too, that it's like, I felt right at home. And some of it is the ancestral wisdom around spirit connection and opening portals and moving inside of them together gets activated in circle with colors, with sound, with language. Like, it's like, it was just, it was, it was a, a spirit moving experience and one that I felt really at home at because I think that's what I'm always trying to do too, even though it looks different, you know, even though it's in a different yeah. um, venue and form. So anyway, thank you. I love you so much. I love you too. <laughs> Anyone else want to share, offer, um, ask anything? Flo, what you doing? Look, I have to call on her. She my baby. <laughs> Just okay. I'm here. I'm trying to, you know, step up, step back. Because, you know, I'll get in there. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty <laughs> and hungry for working with the people. I'm like, how much more time we got? What are we going to do? So I'm, I'm, I'm good. I, uh, I know all, yeah, I know this, I know that it works. And, uh, and so I'm just, I'm just chilling. I'm trying to be everywhere and follow, you know, attend as many workshops follow sharing around and give my life <laughs> but that's it i'm following you back <laughs> yeah yeah i you know and i have a new piece of development which is really interesting because there are a lot more characters that i normally deal with and a lot of the things that i haven't um you know always looking for that thing like what's not being said um how else am i not exploring in my body um, and then what does that look like to do so much work around the body and have folks that are in, uh, 
by finding out the long-term effects of COVID uh, and people that are artists that have been sick, how people are engaging back with their art. You know, I've, I've had it, my breath is different. Um, so just exploring different practices to help me explore that and figure out how, you know, how we're all, because of, you know, a lot of us are dealing with that right now. But hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Flo. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, yeah, how how are you guys? Yeah, was someone going to yeah. say? Well, I was also going to say too, okay. Sharon, it's so funny. The thing is, is that dancing and singing is still on my list. Like that my writing, the things that I'm still not, like, um, oh. it's very, you know, interesting that once I wrote that, that there is just like this, um, it's like a mummification, but it's like a self-imposed like mummification. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, um, and, and things that I rely on other artists to kind of do now, especially from a directing perspective when it comes to creating the work. It's like, oh, but you're still not singing and dancing, which is funny. After 20 years, we're still pushing. But yes, I'll let someone else speak. <laughs> Good to see y'all. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you so much, Florinda. Sharon, I just loved, yeah. loved, loved this exercise. It was so beautiful. Oh. It kind of made me um, go back and reach right into a memory that I had not accessed in a very, very long time. Mm. And it was a very beautiful memory because it was of my dad, actually. Mm. And, you know, you made us think about ancestors. My dad has, of course, joined the ancestors many, many, many years ago. Mm. And, uh, but he used to sing the newspapers. Oh, headlines. wow. So he would, he would mm -hmm. sing all the headlines of the newspaper. So even if it was like, so I, you know, I have four projects, Sharon, right now, like four artistic projects. I'm not even talking about Pangea. <laughs> <laughs> so, but of course, yes, you, made me, you made me think of a fifth artistic <laughs> project. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And then I have a smile and I are working on something to want to work on something together too. So like the, that's the sixth one, but but my dad would say, I, "How are you gonna rele relegate me to number six, Mina? No, you're on. number one. You're always number one. <laughs> so, yeah, this, I'm a uh, slacker. I'm only doing two. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I seriously, my father would sing the newspapers in the morning. He would sit in his uh, comfortable this thing. He would sit on the chair, and then he'd be sitting. And then the most dire news. I mean, I was just thinking of that because you know we listen to such dire news right now." Yeah, I mean, it's like yes. people are not giving up their presidency. People are like, you don't know how, whether they're going to get out of the White House or not. I mean, you yeah. know, et cetera. So my dad would sit there in his uh, chair and then he would sing out like all kinds of things. Like man got sentenced to 25 years for killing his wife. Yeah. Or <laughs> Donald Trump Jr. says he'll pass time by cleaning guns. So everything would be reduced to this. Like we would all be like around him laughing. But yeah. it, would be just, like, it would take the bite out of the news because of yeah. the way he would sing out everything and then suddenly out of all of that there would be like yeah. the strains of like he was a very good singer so he would sing a Carnatic like in Tamil a Carnatic music classical song in the middle of that wow you know wow. and then and then he would quote Shakespeare after that so wow. like, really like you know so I feel like that's where I got my love for literature because it was like all this very eclectic uh, um, uh, you know, uh, and, and so it made me think of, wow, I should turn that into like some kind of piece that is, uh, uh, you, uh, you know, that, that thinks about like, like uh, uh, my, my growing up. So I don't know, maybe, maybe it's there somewhere, some seed somewhere. Yeah. Oh, so thank my God. you for making me think of that. And I love the way that uh, this aesthetic, you know, I, saw, I just want to say another memory of mine, which is anyway, so that's one, one thing I just want to share with everybody because it just made me go to a personal place. But the other thing, that I remember seeing uh, that Adlin actually acted in was this um, a play uh, uh, that Laurie directed. We, are, we hired her to direct uh, uh, Banada Alba in um, 2009. Mm. Seriously, it was one of the most brilliant Banada Albas I have ever seen in my life. It, mm. True, mm. it employed the jazz aesthetic from beginning to end. Yeah, it was just movement. It was like abstract movement. Mm -hmm. It, I, I mean, it, it, it couldn't be anybody else but Laurie who directed yeah. that piece. Yeah, and uh, that's what Dipankar and I were like in awe of when we saw the piece. Yeah, and and saw how she had directed it. I think people ne didn't necessarily understand it, but it was brilliance and action. Yeah, serious. Yeah, and yeah. she, you know, and it was. I, I'm really I, so much, so much. Love and respect for Laurie Carlos. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was in that piece. I was in that piece. Are you kidding? Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, I was in that Bernardo Alba piece. It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. 
Wow. Learn so much, learn so much about that rhythm and that counterpoint and the and the use of of, of movement and to to denote so much. It was um it was really a, a fantastic experience. What was your experience of working through the text, paying attention to other casts and the simultaneity, uh, particularly sparked by movement? For me, it was a lot about listening, like, listening to what Laurie was saying, because to, to understand Laurie, you have to listen in a particular way. At least I have to, I have to put yeah. my brain, like I, I have to switch yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so it was like learning in my, again, it was like learning a dance. Mm -hmm. It was like a choreography, mm -hmm. a choreography that included words, movement and listening and listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's the only way that I could, could tell you that from what I remember. But there was a moment in Bernal Alba where all the women are sitting or they're talking about um, the, the man, this man that has come to rile up everybody, right? Mm -hmm. And she had us sitting in chairs with this huge cloth and then just um, asked us to start talking the text and then gestures came up. Mm -hmm. And so with this cloth, as we are all sitting there, we're not looking at each other, but we're talking. And do you see that the man is coming? And do you see why he's going over here? And do you see why he's saying the things that he's, and everybody has their, and it's like a dance. It's like a dance. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree with what Mina is saying that um, a lot of people did not understand the dissonance with the, with the sound of the music over it. My mother was in that audience and she was like, I didn't understand certain parts of it because of the sound and whatever. Mm -hmm. But she said, I have never seen anything that just flowed so beautifully with words and movement and that they, it wasn't said, okay, this is a dance thing, or this is a, now it's going to be a, 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 a you know, the, 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 the dialogue. It was all weaved together. Mm -hmm. And with the use of culture too, because she had us doing the flamenco claps and she had us doing a lot of different movements that was just, I wish I could go back. I wish I could go back so I could take notes. <laughs> oh God, I hear you. Well, thank you for taking us back and what you shared. Uh, oh, and Mina, please do all seven of those projects, but especially that one that you shared that came to you about your dad singing those headlines. My God. Um, we, uh, just for sake of time, maybe if there's one or two more people that want to share anything you want to share. And if you want to share about something that you're up to or something that, um, yeah, anything, uh, no, no boxes on it. I just want to acknowledge that there was a baby in the room. Yes. <laughs> yes. Congratulations, how beautiful, Stephanie. Yes. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's eight months old. Oh He's my God. Right <laughs> <laughs> you better go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I do have a question actually. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for this workshop. This is really, really powerful. Thank um, you. I'm, I'm wondering about um, specifically when you're talking about telling stories that you require in this moment for healing, what happens in that process when you encounter old wounds or when you encounter uh, ancestors that you may not want to encounter uh, or ancestry that you wanted to leave behind? Um, how do you move through that or step away from that? How, how does that work um, in your process so that you can keep moving forward? Thank you so much. That's such an important question and thing for us to talk about. I, I feel like all of us have different uh, ways, tool sets, understandings, methods of doing that. Um, for myself, the art and the life are not separate. So I'm always um, writing through my own healing and growth. So anything that shows up is something that is trying to work itself through me anyway. And so through, um, you know, years of just understanding my creative process and also my own personal commitment to spirit and healing, I, I recognize now kind of how to accelerate that. 
So it's the whole life. <laughs> it's like that day in 1995 when I stopped drinking. It's that day, you know, in 2005 when I gave up sugar. Like, it's like all the things. It's that time I got initiated. It's when I got baptized. It's my memories of the Catholic Church. Like, it's like all the things and all the bits along the way have somehow given me information, places to turn. It's my therapist. Yes, I do call him. Uh, you know, it's how I care for my body. It's who I have in my life. It's that I've released toxic people, um, you know, from, my, from me closely. I've released and worked on my own toxic behavior because I was a fool in a hot mess um, for years. Um, so it's like all the things and then it's the continuous opportunity to discover new things, new ways, new places, new people, new um, opportunities to lean in and grow. So I think that understanding creative process, and for me, part of that is um, um, research, literal research, which has taken me all the way to Nigeria, uh, to Ile Ife. It's taken me to the archives in, in, at Tulane. It's, you know, it's taken me to prayer, <laughs> crying on my knees. Like, it's like all of that. And then um, having people that I am in close relationship with that I trust and are trustworthy that I can call and cry to. I'd be like, Flo, <laughs> what had happened was Flo. And, you know, she can hold me. You know, so it's my community and then it's other, it's, it's gathering uh, other tools. Like I became a Reiki master, not that I practice Reiki, but I needed to experience learning about how to move energy. So I think it's all of those things. And for me following the work and really, you know, I think there are some things that it's not time to tell. There are some places that we're not prepared to actually go to. So it's mm -hmm. also discernment. There are some mm -hmm. places that if we go, we'll, we'll, be, we'll harm ourselves or we won't be able to get up from. So I think discernment is part of it. And that's for me where my community, my art family can help me because they'll call me out of a dark place or push me towards it if, if that's what's needed. So I think it's all those things, um, yeah. I'm sorry, Sharon, I wanna just add like, cause I think the thing, especially being someone, um, you know, who's been in this particular practice for over 20 years, like you, it is a specified training. It is a thing and you have to have like that community piece that's not just about being in a circle with each other, but also about mentorship. Um, and so then that way you're not ever in a position as you get, or I'm hoping as I continue to get better at the practice, I know how to witness the emotion without becoming emotion because I've learned it from an elder in the practice who taught me that as part of the practice. You know what I mean? Like there has to be, you got to go to, you know, who, who's, who's learning, like who's learning it, who's, who's training you. And then that just, that belief that you can do something on your own, I think is there's no place for it in this particular kind of work. Like you have to have connection to people. And then a lot of that connection has to be in a mentor, mentee uh, capacity, um, somebody who you can trust to snatch you up. And then one thing, as I've noticed with the work, then you run less, it's like, oh, I'm not hurting myself doing this work. I ain't got to kill myself to, to, to get to the beauty of a moment. And I'm in the right room when I when people aren't allowing me to do that as a part of my artistic practice. Um, and it's definitely not, you know, you know, there's some boxes are that are too heavy, you don't lift it when you buy yourself. <laughs> so that same thing runs true, I think, with our work and that um, yeah, you gotta you have you got you gotta go learn about it, I think, it, regardless of your discipline, like who's 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 got your back. So I just wanted to to just echo that. And, and I think that ties to the experience that I got to have with you guys in Minneapolis is that that mentor-mentee relationship is so, so important. Like who who who's training you? How, how are you getting the word? And then that way you're clear when it's your time to pass it on to the next generation. 
Thank you so much. And I'm getting notes that we're it's if <laughs> we're already at time. Um, that was a perfect. Um, way to close this moment, but thankfully we have other things that we can come back and gather into. I thank you each. I'm so grateful for you each. I'm sending you each love and light and blessings, you and all your loved ones and everyone everywhere. May we be the light and the love um, that, that we seek and that we are most powerfully able to offer. Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you. And hi to everybody, because I've been like looking at this room and going hey there's Idris there's him so hi to everybody there's Denise hi please know that I see, I see you and I love you and that's it thank you thank you to everyone everyone for being here in the zoom room thank you so much Sharon for that <laughs> gorgeous workshop and for modeling perfectly how to go with the flow and roll with the spirit <laughs> and make it all happen. Um, and thank you all uh, Institute participants who are here with us and everyone who's watching on HowlRound. Um, we want to say thanks to HowlRound for uh, live streaming this weekend. And thank you to our amazing technical crew for figuring things out and rolling with us. Uh, to Pangea World Theater, of course, and Art to Action and all of our funders and partners. And we want you to join us tonight for the NIDEC 2020 open mic on HowlRound at six uh, Pacific, eight Central and nine Eastern with your amazing co-hosts, Kayla Salcedo and Andresia Real Mosley and DJ Ushka. If you don't know these folks, believe me, you want to know these folks and you want to get in on seeing all the amazing work that's going to be shared this evening. So please join us back on HowlRound then and throughout the weekend. We got more sessions tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. Love to Sharon. Love to everyone in the Institute. And we'll see you all again soon. Bye, Lelani Nova.